Good morning and God bless you as you begin your Wednesday this morning. Today we're continuing our series on encounters with Jesus and since I get to choose which encounters to talk about, I'm going to choose again one of my favorites that, um, especially if those of you who have been in any Bible studies that I've led or been around our church for a while, you know that I find this story absolutely captivating. But before I read this story, I want to put two other non-biblical stories in your mind first and then we'll see how they relate to it earlier. The first is, um, is from my scuba diving years. I was in my class to get scuba certified and apparently every scuba class, eventually somebody will ask the question, what do you do if you see a shark? And my instructor who was a retired Navy diver, uh, kind of a rough guy, he gets really serious and he said, okay, you guys need to understand this. If you see a shark in the water, you take out your knife, you cut your buddy and you swim like hell. And for a minute there, we thought he was serious. Kind of reminds me of the story of the two hikers out in the woods when a bear starts charging them. And one of them goes to tie his shoes. And he says, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna outrun the bear? And the friend looked at the other one and said, I don't need to outrun the bear. I just need to outrun you. Now with those two stories in mind, I'd like to read to you from Luke chapter seven. Now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. When a woman who lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume and she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair and kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two men owed money to a certain money lender. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he canceled the, set, the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt canceled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned to warn the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her sins have been forgiven, for she has loved much. But he who has been forgiven little, loves little. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests and began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. You know, sometimes I worry that some of the um, negative sides of religion is that oftentimes people don't necessarily want to understand or know or be truly good. They just want to make sure that they're better than somebody else. And I think of the Pharisees, and the Pharisees had a reputation. If you asked any good Pharisee, they would be the first to admit that they are not perfect that all people sin, including them. The key is to find people and to make sure there are people and the way you teach and the way you interpret the law, the way you apply the law, you can always work it so that there is somebody beneath you, somebody that you can feel better about yourself, somebody that you can go to before God and say, God, at least I'm not that person. 
reminds me of the parable Jesus tells about a Pharisee who goes to the temple and a tax collector and the Pharisee beats his chest or, or you know puffs himself up and he says oh God I thank you that I am not like that tax collector over there I tithe I give a tenth of all I make and he rattles off the good things he does and then when Jesus tells about the sinner the tax collector the tax collector falls on his knees and beats his chest and he says have mercy on me I am a sinner and Jesus explains the parable and says I tell you the truth this man not the other went home justified before God I worry so often in our lives that the way we treat our relationship with God is exactly like Simon the Pharisee we know we are not perfect but we also know we're not one of those people and I'll let you figure out who those people are in your heart and in your mind the reality is if we don't understand the point Jesus is making we don't get the whole gospel itself because whether you own 500 denarii or whether you own 50 the point Jesus makes is neither of them could pay the debt and so we may measure our sins against somebody else's and we may assume that ours are minor in compared to theirs which seems so much bigger or so much more damaging and we may or may not be right in that of course who are we to judge and how are we to be to be able to discern what's the cost of a sin is my pride and my arrogance my selfishness my self-centeredness my rude words sometimes my bad language how do I put a price on that when it comes to the Lord it's interesting of all the grace and the love and the mercy that Jesus offers so freely to anybody who would ask him the one condition he puts on it is that if you're gonna ask me for mercy be merciful to others if you're gonna ask me to forgive your sins I'm happy to do it I love reconciling with people but if you want my forgiveness you have to be gracious you have to forgive others as well we even pray it in the Lord's Prayer you know forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us now I invite you to think of yourself and I guess there's a chance that um, we could be either character in the story I worry for myself at least that I fall into the category more often than not of Simon the Pharisee where I just want to be a little better than somebody else but that idea of truly being good truly being like Christ to other people in all the aspects of my life well that's it's kind of a tall order have you ever put yourself in the role of the woman someone who knows their sin who carries that shame and maybe you have a reputation and others know that sin as well but so devoted to Jesus and so thankful because in Jesus you know that you are loved you know that you are forgiven that your past is never going to be held against you and that nothing will separate you from Jesus love isn't that an amazing thing now I don't know which character you relate to more on this day there are days I believe it or not I actually am very very aware of my sin and I just fall at Jesus feet and I thank him for forgiveness but there are other days that aren't so good so I'll let you decide for yourself what today is going to look like and which character in this story you're going to emulate God bless you as you pray as you ponder and as you think of your relationship with God and with others. Amen. Bye-bye.